Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints, my name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Warhammer TV's new animation, Broken Lance. It's a nice little foray into some of my favorite walking war machines known as Knights. We'll be following the siege of House Korvac as they resist the slimy claws of Nurglite forces and bring you the love, details, and lore you expect from this channel. Now, before we break down this episode, let's break down these excellent shirts I got from Into the AM. I saw a few other creators I respect in the space repping the brand, including Black Magic Craft and Wes Hammer, so when I was asked if I'd be interested in trying it, I leapt at the chance to see if they lived up to the hype. I was not disappointed, and you can capitalize on my experience by using the discount code down in the description. I'm more of a muted kind of guy, so the simple branded tees were the perfect fit for me. They were thicker than I expected, butter smooth, and were tight in the right places and loose in the others. If you need something more creative, they have awesome graphic tees. If you're in a colder climate, they have long sleeve shirts and Henley style. And if you need something more formal, they have polos and collared shirts. I even tried some of their athletic shorts, which were just as comfortable with just the right amount of stretch and the perfect fit. If your wardrobe needs a refresh, use the discount code down in the description and pick up some fresh fits for yourself. Let's get into the breakdown. Our ancestors crossed the void of a lost dark age. We were a people in search of a home. And we found worlds filled with beasts and terrors. Worlds where we were not settlers, nor colonists. We, we were prey. So we turned the tools of work into the instruments of war. We fought back, and we won. We raised fortresses in the Wat, sanctuaries within a hostile land. Beneath their stone vigil, our kingdom was made safe and whole. We became knights, honored to stand above our subjects, our chivalry their shield. We were bound to our kingdom, and it to us. is our duty, daughter, our oath.
During the dark age of technology, humanity experienced a colonial boom that sent them out into the stars. When they colonized planets, they found alien and megafauna threats that required a little more firepower than they brought. In order to fight these threats, humanity repurposed their industrial machinery into warrior constructs, allowing them to contend with the titanic threats of the galaxy. The upkeep of these war machines was monstrous, but their need was critical, and so societies that relied on knights heavily created neo-feudal societies. Similar to the Middle Ages of old, the elite classes were given privileges, wealth, and high education, but were also charged with the physical protection of everyone within their realm. These neo-feudal societies also replicated the intrigues of the old world with great and minor houses vying for territory and property, creating trade and security zones based on pledges of fealty, alliance, and status, keeping their wits and blades sharp. We can see this contradictory history play out on the tapestries on the walls, showing modern metal scaffolding being used to make massive medieval stone fortresses meant as safe havens for the colonists of these planets. It must be noted that during the Age of Strife, the millennia-long conflict brought on by the war with the Men of Iron and warp storms caused by the birthing convulsions of the Dark Goddess Slaanesh, Night Worlds survived comparably unscathed. Their conservative societies based on colonization and hierarchy saw them trusting their warrior elite over abominable intelligences and purging psychers who were so often the portals through which demons destroyed worlds. As a result, when the Great Crusade found Night Planets, they found comparatively culturally and technologically primitive societies, but were worlds that were still thriving. We are thrust into a pitch battle as poxwalkers swarm over an armager knight. Knights are single pilot walking war machines, whereas titans are multi-crewed constructs. In the Imperium of Man, knight houses organize themselves into two loyalties and three main classes. Questorus Imperialis houses are more loyal to the Imperium and therefore serve alongside guard, marine, sisters, and inquisition detachments when called. Questorus Mechanicus houses work more closely with the cult Mechanicus and their tech priests and logistically and technologically benefit from that close relationship. Armagers are the smallest class of knight and serve as squires and bondsmen to the higher classes. While armager pilots are less technologically connected to their machines, they are valued and lethal warriors just of a lower station than their Questorus and Dominus class. Last kin. Questorus are the most common large knight constructs and are a symbiosis of man and machine. Similar to space marines, young noblemen of knight houses are screened genetically and physically for selection. Once they are old enough, they are connected to a throne, the tomb of a machine spirit that has seen centuries or millennia of combat. He must bend the machine's will to his own or be killed or made vegetative by the process. Once a knight scion is able to commune with a throne, he leaves an imprint on it, craving to be connected to his machine the way starving men hunger. And when he dies in battle, an echo of his consciousness will remain to guide and temper the next generation of knights with his wisdom and rage. In this battle, we see Reaper Chainswords, Thunderstrike Gauntlets, Thermal Cannons, and an Avenger Gatling Cannon. Each weapon classification reflects the temperament of the pilot and the machine spirit, with zealous and aggressive knights preferring close range and melee weaponry, whereas cool, calm, and collected knights will often opt for more longer range variants. Dominus class knights, not shown here, are the rarest, largest, and most well-armed knight class, and are reserved for the high nobility of the houses. You can easily see how if the knights weren't matched with an evenly equipped foe, they would dominate the battlefield and the planet. Unfortunately for our heroes, they are faced with chaos-corrupted knights and demons of Nurgle, who are both disgustingly resilient, pox and pus-covered monsters trying to rip everything apart. The speed and tenacity of the armagers is impressive, but it's not enough, as the Auspex reveals an overwhelming force of diseased enemies. Several knights fall in the fighting retreat, with the Questorus knight even being shredded by an Electro Scourge, a bladed flail used by Chaos Knights. Laser batteries and flaming trebuchet rounds hold back the Nurglite forces from the void-shielded Ferrocrete and Adamantium-spined fortress for now. Before moving to the next section, we are greeted with some dialogue I will summarize. If you want the whole experience, go to the original. We meet Lady Korvac, a rotting old woman chastising her court, and her two sons, Lavraine and Thaniel. Lady Korvac describes Lavraine as kind, brave, and loyal, but it is not enough as he is like a blade of steel with no edge. Thaniel is the eldest, the heir apparent, and is arrogant and protective of his position. When the sons hear of the battle, Lavraine takes the news on its face and wishes to march out to face the beast, while Thaniel would prefer to sit behind the walls and protect their bloodline. The bearer of the news is Genevieve, a free blade who was exiled from the court when her father, the previous king, died in battle. Her trespass could easily result in expulsion or death, but she is tolerated due to the dire circumstances. Lady Korvac orders her sons to the field to win or die with honor, while Genevieve is ordered to stay. This is first taken as a slight to Genevieve, but a dark secret is revealed.
With Odo, my brother, my king. The day my father... The day he died? Yes. From that day, my fate has been this throne. Never again to march, never again to wear armor. Just to watch and hope and fight alone. You? Fight alone? There is no battle here, only the cowardice of an old crone. The real war is outside, and I intend to join it. We are so close, Genevieve, so close to the end. The only way to win. The only way. Death cannot come for you swiftly enough. Ancestors crossed the void of a lost dark age. We were a people in search of a home. We found worlds filled with beasts and terrors. I know the story. Do you? We became knights. We became knights, honored to stand above our subjects, our chivalry their shield. We were bound to our kingdom and it to us. My father spoke these words to me in my cradle, and a thousand times thereafter, I know the story. <sighs> it is a lie. Our ancestors did not triumph. They were slaughtered. Darkness runs through this world, in its waters, under its skin. Everywhere. There was no victory to be found. So they made a bargain. They became knights. As did their sons and daughters. As did their descendants. And we are bound to their pact. They knew that one day damnation would come to claim its due. You are insane. We are bound, Genevieve. All of us. Bound by blood pact unto the last generation that preys upon me because I fight and I fought for ten years now. It would be so easy. So easy to give in. To rest. To sleep. It took your father First the despair, and it trickled through his blood. Then, the cruelty, as it gnawed at his heart. Then the marks on his flesh as it made him its prisoner. He hid it from you, Genevieve, hid it from the court for as long as he could. But he could not hide it forever. It hollowed him out. A secret sickness, bleeding him dry. I feared he would no longer fight it. That he could no longer fight it. You... I marched out with him one last time. There was no beast. Dishonorable blow 
from behind. You killed him. You killed my father. I had to try. I had to. I thought with him gone, the curse would pass, that we would be free. But there is only one way to free our bloodline of that ancient oath. We will win this war. And once the enemy is driven back, we can fight this this curse. <laughs> Have you heard nothing? This is no plague to catch and fight. It is in our blood, our souls. If we live, we are damned. But we can die with honor. We can take this evil with us into our grave. No sacrifice could be more worthy. And I should heed the words of the treacherous witch that murdered my father. <laughs> Do you believe he could have fought this? That I am weak where he was strong? Ask him yourself. He is here. Doom has come, and all will fall and crumble. But the name of House Corvac dies pure. Why tell me this? Why now? It is my confession. I would see the end with a clear conscience. All I ever did was form my realm for my house. I am sorry. I will not fail as you failed. die. The Suns march out to face the Horde and are summarily cut down. In order to understand what happens next, we have to understand the relationship between the gods and the material realm. When understanding the gods of Warhammer 40k, we have to set definitions. When Westerners think of God, they think of the omniscient, omnipotent creator of the universe who has a character that values order over chaos, good over evil, and cares about the lives of individual mortal creatures. To our knowledge, this God does not exist in the Warhammer 40k universe. However, ancient Terran pagans and many religious people within the 40k universe believe and understand eternal forces to be gods. This is why we have Ares, the god of war, and Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, and Apollo, the god of knowledge. When you perform an act on the mortal plane or venerate these deities, you are giving them power. In the 40k universe, if an eternal force is given enough power and worship, it will manifest in the warp as an echo of reality, and if strong enough, it will gain its own sentience. This sentience will then desire to become more influential on the mortal plane to gain more power in the warp. When you despair, when you succumb to disease, when something rots, when the entropic forces of the universe corrode, this all fuels the chaos god Nurgle. It is revealed that the home planet of House Korvac is tainted by the power of chaos. Despite valiant effort, the knights were unable to defeat this corruption and instead had to make a bargain. The forces of chaos would never totally destroy the settlements of the planet as long as they were allowed to infect and torment the ruler of House Korvac and any blood heir that succeeded them. This points out an interesting dynamic. 
The forces of chaos never truly want to win. If they destroyed all mortal creatures, if they truly annihilated the Imperium, they would lose the worship and suffering that gives them power. In this way, House Korvac is a microcosm of the Imperium itself, doomed to corruption and despair, but never fully allowed to die, lest it end the great game of the gods. Lady Korvac reveals that when her older brother Odo began to break under the weight of the disease, she murdered him, hoping to end the curse. In turn, she bore the weight of the disease for a decade, exiling her niece and heir apparent to save her from the curse, and ordering her sons to their deaths so they would not need to suffer as she had. Genevieve is disgusted by this confession, believing it to be the lies of a dying witch, but in some ways, this effort by Lady Corvec is noble. She tried to relieve her brother's torment and death. She bore the curse of her house by being fed on by Nurgle like a dog's chew toy. She protected her sons from the blight as long as she could, and she killed them before they could ascend to the throne and its curse. In doing this, she never turned to Nurgle for salvation. She never pledged her house or realm to the Dark Gods. Instead, she fought on for the realm, for the Imperium, and for her house. She murdered her own brother, dispossessed her niece and sent her children to their deaths, but in the end, she was loyal to all of them. Lady Genevieve ends Lady Corvec's suffering with a knife and marches out to meet her father, now a Nurglite Revenant Chaos Knight, here to destroy his own house in the name of the Plague God. The Queen is dead. And we will follow her to the grave if we remain here. We must meet the enemy, iron against iron. If we do nothing, we are surely doomed. I would have you march with me, clad in Corvex steel. on this world.
we became knights. Honored to stand above our subjects, our chivalry their shield. We were bound to our kingdom, and it to us. Our lands besieged, our blood corrupted by sin. We prevailed, in oath and duty. We redeemed our souls and welcomed victory. Genevieve rides out and uses a reaper chainsword to rip apart her father's knight before slagging it with a thermal spear. She tells a new lie, that the curse is broken through them keeping their oaths and redeeming their souls. But just as we cut to black, we see the blood oath corruption setting in. This means that as long as a blood inheritor of House Corvec remains in power, they are forever cursed. Now, don't click away as I have some very cool announcements. One, I have made a 12 gauge slash 72 caliber bolter based on the VRF 14 shotgun platform. I'll be releasing a long form video on it in the next month or two as I perfect it and go shoot some IRL content. Two, Into the AM is a very nice sponsor that I wanna work with in the future. So I implore you to use my discount code and pick up some shirts if you need a few upgrades to your wardrobe. Three, I will be working on a bolt pistol and chainsword next, but I might need some help fundraising Halo and aliens based projects. So you have the means and interest, please support the channel. All that being said, like, share, and subscribe, dislike, and comment down below for the comment gods. Check out the politics channel if you're into that kind of thing down in the description below, and join the Discord if you want to talk to other science fiction and politics nerds. Get your minis painted by Mastermind Models and Miniatures, get your wallets from Hawkins and Company, get your gaming chair from Ewan Racing, and support the other sponsors of the channel. I appreciate you, catch you in the next one, until the end.